Remember, Donald Trump is not just accused of trying to obstruct justice. He also tried to overturn an election in plain sight. And some of his acolytes are still trying to overturn that election all these months later. Believe it or not, the so-called audit in Arizona is still going on. But wait, you say, didn't some Republicans who backed it acknowledge that it turned into a terrible idea, an absolute farce? You remember correctly, Republican State Senator Paul Boyer admitted, quote, it makes us look like idiots. Looking back, I didn't think it would be this ridiculous. It's embarrassing to be a state senator at this point. Indeed it is. He said that one month ago today, and yet the so-called audit continues. Dozens of people continue to work day after day to confirm what we already knew. Joe Biden won Maricopa County and the state of Arizona easily, legally, fairly. And look, just because you may have lost interest or because Biden has now been in office for nearly five months doesn't mean, sadly, that other people are losing interest too. Arizona has welcomed delegations from other states, GOP delegations, almost like a parade of nations at the Olympics, except all the nations in this case are banana republics. Last week, Pennsylvania Republicans visited, including State Senator Doug Mastriano. He's a man who loves to travel. His campaign also paid for buses to bring fellow Pennsylvanians to Washington, D.C. on January the 6th. And on Tuesday, Alaska State Rep David Eastman and Georgia State Senators Brandon Beach and Burt Jones and Georgia Republican Party Chair David Schaefer all joined the walk through the center. And as Greg Bluestein of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution points out, these are not fringe characters. Jones is expected to soon enter the race for lieutenant governor. Beach is a potential candidate for a U.S. House seat. Schaefer was just re-elected as the head of the state GOP, one of the most influential posts in Georgia politics. Georgia, of course, has their own outrageous court-ordered vote audit, in quotation marks, let me say, audit in Fulton County, a county which just happens to be 45% black and just happened to have had massive turnout, which helped flip the state blue for the first time in ne nearly 30 years. The good news is the Arizona farce will be over soon. The hand recount of 2.1 million ballots is expected to wrap up finally this week, and the whole charade should be done by the end of the month. But this dangerous model could spread to other states. Arizona Republicans even say officials from other states have also contacted them, including from Virginia and from Wisconsin. At the same time, massive percentages of Trump voters, rank-and-file Republicans, and especially white evangelicals, all believe illegal voting is a major threat, even though there's no evidence that illegal voting is a thing, is widespread, is happening. And nearly 30% of Republican voters believe... <laughs> I kid you not, believe there's an honest-to-goodness chance that Donald Trump could be reinstated as president this year. This year! Astonishing. And now a major crop of midterm candidates for the GOP uh, is campaigning on the idea that the 2020 election was stolen. So State Senator Paul Boyer may be right. Audits like the one in Arizona does make them look like idiots. But maybe, just maybe, they're useful idiots. Joining me now is Mona Charon, syndicated columnist and policy editor for The Bulwark. She's also host of the podcast Beg to Differ and a former, I should add, former Republican. Uh, Mona, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. Let's talk about that poll that I just mentioned. 30% of Republican voters believe Donald Trump will be reinstated by August. I guess my question is, how can millions of Americans believe the political equivalent of the moon is made of cheese? <sighs> yeah, well, uh, it's the uh, it's the information silos. I mean, they're getting their information from their sources. You know, you can always tell when people are a little bit odd or maybe a little nutty that when they say, well, I've done my independent research. And what they usually mean by that is that they've seen something on YouTube or on uh, uh, or on some wacky website and uh, and they choose they choose to believe it look we have always had conspiracy theories we've always had nuts uh, we had 9-11 truthers we had certainly I mean the Kennedy assassination gave birth to a million conspiracy yes. theories that die out for generations right but only now do we have the conspiracy thinking and the nuttiness kind of go mainstream I mean, it is it's it's at the yes. very top of the Republican Party. And in fact, it's become sort of a ticket of admission. As you pointed out, all of these candidates around the yes. country know that they have to give lip service, at least to the idea that there's widespread voter fraud and that the election of 2020 was illegitimate in order to be taken seriously as a Republican candidate, even for the House or local race. Uh and 
not just the candidates, but the officials are in trouble too. We saw Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, a Republican, censured at his state party after standing up to pressure from Donald Trump and Lindsey Graham to, in effect, toss out the election in Georgia. It feels as if the handful of Republicans who did stand up for democracy and for facts in 2020 won't be around to do it again in 2024. That 2020 was just a training exercise. Well, right. I mean, one of the things that, you know, there were any number of uh, Republican officials who had integrity in 2020. Brad Raffensperger is one of them. There were many others who refused tremendous pressure to alter the results or to uh, to fudge the results. Um, and they, they showed their integrity. They did the right thing. And rather than being hailed as victories, as uh, heroes of democracy, they have been censured by local GOP branches around the country, whereas yeah. those who spread the big lie are being elevated. You know, Liz Cheney was was uh, booted out of leadership uh, just for telling the truth. Yeah, exactly. And. What's so fascinating, you mentioned the kind of fraud being a ticket of admission, the claims of fraud. I mean, this is not just fan fiction with the electorate. The New York Times reports that, quote, across the country, a rising class of Republican challenges has embraced the fiction that the 2020 election was illeg illegitimate. If elected, they would bring to Congress the real possibility that the party's assault on the legitimacy of elections could continue through the 2024 contests. Now, that's something I'm very worried about. Will the House... Uh, certify a Democratic presidential win in 2024. But I wonder, you mentioned earlier, like, the price of admission. We saw what happened in Georgia, Mona, where the two Senate candidates basically said, yeah, the election was stolen. And then some Republicans said, so what's the point of coming out and voting for you if elections are stolen? Could it backfire on the Republican Party that actually people won't turn out to vote if they have no confidence that their votes are actually being counted? And that could hurt Republicans. That That is a risk that they are taking, no question about it. And, and let me just add a couple of little possible bright spots. One is that um, a, a um, member of the legislature in Oregon is facing censure from his Republican Party in Oregon for having cooperated with a similar uh, raid on the Oregon Capitol in December. So that's one little sign of, of at least uh, civic health. Uh, the other is the result. I mean, it's very narrow. But in New Jersey, the Republican primary yielded the least Trumpy of the potential candidates uh, for governor. So that too yes. is a slight little green shoot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.